Hey everybody, it's Party Elite with another online battle today. In this one, I take the Vampire Counts into battle against a fully fleshed out Bretonian army from the new update, led by John Bird. I suspected a long line of foot squires, and so I wanted to get a wind of death in there, so I put Manfred in charge and on a flying mount. Uh, you'll see two terror geists, a massive investment to make sure Manfred has some protection in the air, and to try and counter the Bretonian Air Force and ground cavalry, the latter alongside the Blood Knights, of course. Then, uh, the very foundation of my army, its backbone, if you will, is formed of five skeleton warriors ranked up to rank two, and two skeleton spearmen, all of whom are supported by the Mortis Engine. Bretonia is led by Alberic de Bordelot, with a Damsel of the Heavens, a Paladin, four units of peasant mobs, two units of spearmen with shields, a Grail Reliquate, which was a great call, four units of foot squires, four units of peasant bowmen, some ranked up to rank one, and two units of Grail Knights. Now, the Grail Reliquate was a good call because of that immunity to psychology, but I would say those peasant bowmen may have been better off replaced by some uh, flaming arrows. Now, let's dive right into it. All right, as always, we're going to start with a conversation about layout, and it's pretty simple for myself here, as you can see. I've got my front line, the skeleton warriors forming the middle, and then on either side, we've got the skeleton spearmen in case any flanking maneuvers uh, come charging in. We've got the blood knights off to one side here, and up in the air in the middle, we've got Manfred as well as the two terror geists flying high and proud, and then right in the center, we've got the Mortis Engine as well, and of course the Mortis Engine is able to provide support, provide regenerative support, and cause damage to enemy troops, and I can kind of send the Mortis Engine wherever I deem necessary. Now the uh, Blood Knights off to the side here, the idea was to come in from one flank, or maybe perhaps a uh, shift over to the other if necessary. Now let's take a look at Britonia's layout, a fair bit more complex because it is a fair bit larger. We have a front line of peasant mob up front, of course. Off to the side here, you can see Elberic flying up in the air. Then we've got the Grail Reliquate providing its uh, psychological and leadership support, obviously, to the central portion. We've got the Foot Squires right behind it, the Damsel of Heavens and the Paladin embedded into the Foot Squires. Right behind them, we have the Peasant Bowmen, and then at the back here, Spearmen at Arms with their shields, and then, of course, the two units of Grail Knights. Now, these guys are able to defend any charges coming in from the rear, and, of course, these Grail Knights are able to respond or uh, or be a bit more aggressive if necessary. But when you put them back here, they are a bit more responsive because they will take longer to get to the front and provide any flanking uh, maneuvers. Now... The battle opens up with me, uh, in all honesty, measuring up my enemy's army. I'm trying to get an idea of what he might try to pull, just taking a look at all of his units. Are they flaming peasant bowmen? How many knights does he have? What are, what are the uh, army counts? Is he likely hiding something in the woods somewhere? Uh, so a little slow to the start, but uh, just assessing my opponent's army here, and he does start to push forward a little bit, and so I do respond in just a minute. I, I uh, widen out my lines a little bit. Once I'm confident that this is all there is, I want to potentially try and surround some of the units or at least pierce through and shut down those uh, peasant bowmen and then when I notice that Elberic is actually shifting over to the other side uh, I decide that I'm going to send my terror geists and Manfred off to the right flank as seen from my side and I'm going to keep the blood knights over here in case Elberic wants to come down and help his grail knights back here in any offensive so uh, my overall layout I'm pretty happy with I decide to push forward and I shift my uh, my air force off to the right flank I do see that unit of grail knights as well of course and of course with two terror geists, they won't be a problem. He probably sees that coming and decides rather than stay here and fight uh, over here, he'll pull away and try to support on that other flank instead. Now, Manfred eats some early shots as he's flying in uh, from those peasant bowmen. Good target there. You want to shut down Manfred ASAP, and I get him into position uh, to pull off that wind of death. And I figure, you know, that's a sweet, straightforward line presented to me, but my opponent does a great job here. I target the wind of death, and immediately he shifts forward. I try to counteract that, and he pulls back, and unfortunately, I don't get a good shot off. I do destroy, completely destroy that one unit of foot squares, but apart from that, apart from hitting a couple of peasant bowmen here and there, that wind of death was a massive massive waste of, uh, of Winds of Magic. Now, the front lines do meet these peasant mob are not going to be a problem. You'll see as I dive into the peasant mob, it's a non-issue. They're going to start dying pretty quickly. Off to the side here, the Grail Knights were pulled in to engage these uh, spearmen, or in fact, sorry, I went to respond into these spearmen, and my uh, Blood Knights will soon be sent in to make quick work of those Grail Knights as well. Meanwhile, these skeleton warriors, I intend to push through and chase after some of these uh, peasant bowmen, or depending on the situation, have them come in from the rears and shut down some of these foot squires, all just sort of assessing what might be best. Over here, I make a bit of a mistake. I let these uh, skeleton spearmen get 
attached to these peasant mob. I should have instead pulled them away and sent them towards these peasant bowmen or pulled them away and brought them back here to fight against these foot squires. And instead I have them occupied with a rather weak and, uh, I mean, pathetic unit for lack of a better, uh, term. In the meanwhile, though, the two terror guys do dive in to shut down some of this ranged fire, and so the Grail Knights come in to respond, and while they are anti-large, they're not going to do too well against two terror guys. I do send uh, I do send Manfred in. I have him regenerating some of his Winds of Magic, much needed right now, and I do have him drop Undeath Resurgence, just to make sure these terror guys are doing well. Now, I do drop or pull up, I suppose, these zombies as well, just to shut down some of this missile fire. Uh, unfortunately, I should have probably put them a little bit more in the center here to shut both of these units down, but hindsight 2020. And meanwhile, over here, these Grail Knights are running away now that the Blood Knights have come in, but the Blood Knights are going to catch them and cause a fair amount of damage. Uh, there, It'll be a relatively even fight, but I did get the charge off, so the initial damage I get in uh, will certainly... Uh, tip the balance in my favor. So I get the charge off uh, outside of the woods as well, so I get full speed, etc., and uh, you'll see already they've taken some damage, and that'll continue to swing my way. Meanwhile, Albrick here is fighting a couple of skeleton spearmen, and you'll notice over here these skeleton warriors have been pushed through, and they're chasing away these uh, peasant mobs, and soon they're going to land on these peasant bowmen, and this unit of skeleton warriors as well being pushed through uh, to try and cause uh, a little bit of fear and terror back here. Well, not terror, but fear back there. Meanwhile, Manfred over here between the overcast spells and the ranged fire is eating a lot of damage, so that is far from ideal, unfortunately. I do try to pull them away into some safety. Uh, in just a minute, I will pull out another unit of zombies, but uh, again, if these skeleton spearmen had just been sent up there to shut these peasant bowmen down, it would have been a lot quicker and Manfred would have been better off. Uh, however, these zombies do come in and they will shut down that fire. Now, you'll notice over here, all these peasant bo uh, peasant mob units and peasant bowmen units are giving up. They're on their way out, and uh, that basically shuts down the left flank as seen from my side over here. But Alberic is coming in to respond, and as he's flying in, I have to get prepared for a lot of damage coming out of Alberic, and it's obvious what his target is. He's going to go for Manfred to bring in that leadership damage, so good call there. Meanwhile, over here you'll see the Grail Knights uh, are suffering significant losses when fighting against the Blood Knights, and again, that initial charge helps quite a bit, but of course the overall balance would have been in my favor anyway. Now over here, the Skeleton Spearmen, uh, there was always the option of sending them here to help these Blood Knights out, but I decided they were much more necessary over here. And you'll notice actually the Mortis Engine I have engaged on this left flank over here because the Mortis Engine causes fear, terror, and it does obviously uh, cause damage through its uh, its abilities. Rather than keeping it in the center here where the Grail Reliquae would counteract some of the psychological effects, I've decided to put the Mortis Engine off to the side here, even though it started off in the center. So uh, just a little bit of reassigning there because the Grail Reliquae's ability is not necessarily covering all of the units here. This unit of Foot Squires uh, no, actually neither of these foot squires are getting any help from the Grail Reliquae. Now I have the Skeleton Warriors trying to dive in and shut down some of these peasant mobs. And as I said, here comes Albrecht de Bordelot and he's going to hit Manfred. So instantly seeing that come in, I push Manfred away and I try to get these terror guys up into the air. Now Manfred is slower than Albrecht, unfortunately. So Albrecht will catch up and cause, as you see, a lot of damage with just one swipe. And that is where I got extremely nervous about how this battle is going to end up. Now I try to pull off an invocation, unfortunately, but I have to keep moving at the same time. So I'm not able to get that off. I do pull Manfred back, so both of these terror guys are able to gang up on Albrick, and then uh, I, try, I try to keep uh, myself safe and alive, of course, but hanging up there just to provide some encouragement as well, of course, not the safest, because as you can see, Albrick very quickly able to pop out, and I'm just able to get Manfred out of there, but Albrick continuing to give chase again, trying to circle uh, Manfred around and basically allow my terror guys to cut Albrecht off, but that is ineffective. I'm unable to do so. Albrecht almost gets another hit off. These terror guys do jump in on him and I make a fatal mistake here. I pull Manfred down this way. I should have pulled him up because by pulling him down this way, I'm open to these two flurries of ranged fire and you'll see Manfred starts to crumble as he leaves. I managed to get him out of there, but since he's crumbling, he does fall to his death. And the two terror guys now are able to shut down Albrecht quite quickly, taking a lot of health off of him, able to uh, able to shut him down, and I give chase. I don't want him to survive. Ideally, he will die. Meanwhile, at the front, a lot has gone on. You'll notice over here, the Mortis Engine was basically left to clean up these two foot squires. The Skeleton Spearmen are dealing with these Grail Knights, and the Grail Knights were actually suffering not only uh, by attacking the Skeleton Spearmen, who are anti-large, so they were eating a fair amount of damage, but the Mortis Engine was also able to cause a decent amount of damage uh, to the Grail Knights. So... 
not the ideal placement there uh, and you'll see over here the blood knights now being sent in as well uh, to cap off these grail knights because off in the distance here these grail knights were quickly taken care of and you'll see actually uh, I came off fairly heavily on top in that engagement I still have these blood knights still viable for combat so I'm going to send them in now against these grail knights and now the mortis engine I do send into these peasant mobs just to cause a little bit of damage hoping that maybe that uh, charge will do enough to their morale to get them to break but I very quickly realized that that's not the ideal call so I charge in there, get a little bit of damage done, uh, but swiftly send it up and into the center here and try to finish off these last few uh, spearmen at arms as they stand there with a little bit of morale left. Now, you'll notice the Grail Knights here chasing the Mortis Engine, trying to hit it and shut it down potentially, but bad move there. The Blood Knights are able to come in and cause a fair amount of damage there, and of course, the Mortis Engine's ability as well, spreading that damage. Now, up here, you'll notice... One of the terror guys has gone to chase Albrecht off the field and the other terror guys just shutting down this ranged fire causing a lot of terror causing them to rout and getting all of these guys off the field. So that terror guys was used uh, in its namesake to cause a lot of terror there and over here you'll see Curse of the Midnight Wind does go down. Good call. That reduces the Mortis Engine's attack capabilities but of course it is still causing some damage and it will also harm the Blood Knights because the reduction in melee attack and the reduction in armor is going to be a significant problem. However, my main fighting force doesn't really care about the Curse of the Midnight Wind as far as armor goes. So we're able to stick it through and survive. Now the Terrorgeist is going to be sent in to cap off this remnant of the uh, of the Bretonian army. I left it to last because the Grail Relique is there and it will provide support against terror and fear, but that's all that's left on the battlefield more or less. Now these guys are not really a concern. That Terrorgeist has chased off Albrecht, the coward that he is, and there you have it. A Pyrrhic victory for the Vampire Counts. And overall, very well played by my opponent. I made a few key mistakes, I have to say, uh, especially in letting Manfred die. Uh, but at the end of the day, I was able to cheap out on the infantry because I suspected the comparatively expensive foot squires. So I gave myself a superior force in the form of those two terror geists and a unit of blood knights. Uh, good use of the Grail Relique ensured that fear and terror were basically ineffective in parts of the uh, enemy army. Uh, especially in that center there where the Paladin and all were. Uh, but that's exactly why I saved that area for last when it came to using my Terror Geist or when it came to using my uh, Mortis Engine. Uh, very important to keep an eye on your opponent's support units, of course. And that's what I tried to do. Unfortunately, we lost Manfred, but uh, and we wasted a lot of Winds of Magic on a useless Wind of Death, to be frank. Uh, but victory is victory. Now, as always, for more Total War content, make sure you subscribe to this channel. I've mentioned it before. I'm hoping to get a lot more online battles going in this year. And there is, of course, always going to be more Total Breakdown as well if you're hungry for more battles. With all that said, thank you guys very much for watching, and I'll see you on the battlefield.